Basic Concept of EGCS When the vessel is using compliant fuel, the scrubber can be stopped. Hence, the exhaust gas is being bypassed to the atmosphere. Now, when the vessel is using heavy fuel oil, or fuel oil that has more than 0.5% sulfur content, the vessel is obliged to use the EGCS. The pump draws seawater from the sea chest and pumps it into the tower where the cleaning takes place. A wash water monitoring system is measuring the quality of the wash water on the inlet side. When the cleaned exhaust gas leaves the tower, a gas monitoring system reads the parameters of the emission. The dirty wash water goes directly overboard. Another set of wash water monitoring system is in place to measure the quality of wash water that is being discharged to the sea. By using the actual engine room drawing arrangement of a particular vessel, and utilizing a 3D rendering software, a highly accurate 3D mapping of EGCS was created, in order to give an in-depth video presentation about how the system works. In the following video clips, we are going to discuss the flow of operation of the scrubber. But first, let us show you the major components of the EGCS and their functions. The scrubber tower is the main component of the EGCS. Its body is made up of stainless steel to protect itself from the corrosive effect of sulfuric acids which is the byproduct of sulfur and sea water. Inside the tower are sets of nozzles that spray sea water to the exhaust gas. Three sets on the main chamber and another two sets on the venturi. Right below the first and second stage of nozzle rings are the packing beds or wet filters. Below the third nozzle ring is the droplet separator that prevents the droplets from being carried away to the atmosphere. The seawater will be sprayed first to the venturi to prevent the scrubber from dry running and also to cool down the exhaust gas. After that, the first and second stage will spray seawater to the exhaust gas. The last stage is just for cleaning purpose during the stoppage of the scrubber unit. The dirty water will be drained from the bottom of the tower and goes directly overboard. Before the exhaust gas leaves the tower, the CO2 and SO2 will be measured by the gas sampling system. The data will be transferred simultaneously to the CEMS or the Continuous Emission Monitoring System to ensure that the system is in compliance with the regulation. The CEMS or the Continuous Emission Monitoring System is a type approved analyzer which constantly monitors the key parameters of EGCS, such as the ratio of SO2 and CO2. It is strategically located near the gas sampling system to lessen the delay of data transfer. The bypass damper act as a three-way valve for the system. During the EGCS operation, it allows the flow of exhaust gas to the scrubber, while preventing it from going out to the atmosphere. Likewise, when the system is stopped, it prevents the exhaust gas from flowing inside the scrubber. A sealing air is provided to ensure that exhaust gas is going in the right direction. Bypass damper valves will be opened instantly to bypass position in case of the following. 1. Scrubber shutdown initiated by instrumented safety function. 2. Emergency stop is activated. 3. Loss of instrument air or controller signal. The ceiling air fan works 24-7. It continuously supply air to the EGCS regardless if it is running or not. 
This component ensures that there is a proper sealing in the exhaust gas damper. The scrubber pump plays an important role in the system. It delivers variable amount of seawater to the tower based on the system demand. For example, if the vessel is in emission controlled areas, the pumps supply additional volume to the system to clean the exhaust gas more effectively. To comply with the regulations, there are two sets of wash water monitors in the scrubber system. One for both inlet and outlet. Both monitors composed of two cabinets. The pressure reduction cabinet is equipped with a debubbler, filter, and a pump. On the other hand, the sensor module has pH, turbidity, and PAH sensors. The MCP or the main control panel controls the whole operation of the EGCS. It has two digital screens, one for the HMI and the other is for the data logger, where the information can be stored and retrieved at any time necessary. A remote version of MCP called TSP, touch screen panel, is installed in the engine control room but without the data logger. This is the exhaust gas system of main engine with scrubber. After the combustion chamber, the gas will leave the engine from the turbocharger. Then it will go directly to the economizer. After passing through the economizer, the exhaust gas will go to the three-way exhaust damper. The sealing air prevents the gas from going out to the atmosphere. Then, the gas will now go to the EGCS tower where the cleaning takes place. After that, the cleaned exhaust gas will be now discharged in the atmosphere. However, the SO2-CO2 ratio is being continuously monitored by CEMS for compliance. Any deviation from the set point will triggers the alarm on the MCP. This is the seawater piping system of EGCS. The wash water system starts with the sea chest. The system draws water from either high or low sea chest depends on the current setup of the ship. The water will flow through the strainer to remove foreign objects which could damage the equipment. After that, the pump will force the seawater all the way up to the tower. Some part of the seawater that is being pumped into the system, goes to the scrubber water analyzer where it measures the three basic parameters, the pH, PAH, and the turbidity. In the tower, the wash water enter first from the venturi pipes the ensure that to tower will not go dry running. Then, the water will go to the next two stages. The uppermost nozzle ring set is just on standby. When shutting down, this last stage sprays seawater to clean the droplet separator. All wash water from the main chamber and venturi is being drained on the bottom part of the scrubber. The drain line is made up of glass reinforced epoxy which is highly resistant to corrosion. Before the wash water goes overboard, it is then again measured for the values of pH, PAH, and turbidity. Any parameter that goes beyond the allowable limits will trigger an alarm on the MCP or the TSP. The alarm could be critical or non-critical. 
Critical alarm means that the scrubber is already non-compliance and something must be done within one hour to rectify the trouble, otherwise the vessel will have to switch over to compliant fuel.